So today we're going to do the handover video on the Tribute 620. We're going to start on the outside and then we're going to move on to the inside. So firstly, coming over to the passenger side, you can see that you've got your fill-up point and in here goes your diesel. Opening up the passenger door, you'll notice that you've got your bonnet release catch. Just pull that to of course release the bonnet. Now there's not many things that you need to know underneath the bonnet. The main things that you need to know is if you ever jump start in the vehicle. So I'll just lift the bonnet up now and show you where that is uh, that is done from. And with the bonnet open, you can see that you've got your negative terminal which goes onto this nipple here. And then your positive terminal is just located underneath this cap here. As you can see, there's a little plus sign on there and just connect your positive onto there. They're the main things that you need to know as I mentioned, but just to point out a couple more things, you can see that you've got your engine oil here along with your dipstick below that. Your brake disc fluid is then up from there. Next to that is your engine coolant. You've then got your power steering fluid. And finally, in the corner, you've got your washer fluid, which is in there. Moving around the vehicle, on this side, you'll notice you've got a Truma um, vent um, all you need to do is simply remove this by simply pulling up and away on the little top, um, tab at the bottom and that will release the vent. This is in essence the chimney, uh, it does get very hot so just bear that in mind, you don't want to hang anything on there. Um, and what you need to make sure is when you're travelling this vent is always on at all times like so, so no um, road debris or rain or anything uh, or mud gets kicked up into there but then when you're stationary and you are using the Truma heating system on board the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the vehicle um, so that's for your water heating uh, you need to always ensure that this cap is off and as I say when traveling it goes on now if for example you leave this cap on and try to uh, turn your heater on to heat the water on the inside of the vehicle it will fail if you do that three times you'll then need to reset the entire system. Now I'll show you how to obviously operate the heating system on the inside, uh, but please do get into the habit of removing that when on site and stationary and traveling with that on, because you don't want to gas the system out. First up here at the bottom, you can see we've got your first drain down point of the vehicle. This is your gray pipe and this is for your wastewater tank. You've got three main drain down points in the vehicle. You've got your wastewater tank, which you can see is external to the vehicle. You've got your fresh water tank, which is again external to the vehicle at the rear, which we'll go to uh, in a minute. And then the final drain down point is your boiler drain down point located on the inside of the vehicle. So, with your drain down point, what you need to do is when you're on site, you'll have a big grid that you can drive over. Once you're lined up with that grid, all you need to do is turn this valve, and as you can see, the wastewater simply spills out. Once you've emptied the majority of the water uh, in your grid on site, you can leave all your drain down points open because as you're traveling home, that vibration of the road is going to ensure that all that final water is out of the system. Now, as I mentioned, this can be done for the wastewater, waste water, uh, fresh water and the boiler drain down points. So do it all for the, um, the drain down points. You need to always ensure that when the vehicle is not in use, the vehicle is completely drained down. Now on a day like today, it's a nice day, um, obviously in the height of summer, it doesn't really matter if you leave water in the vehicle because it's not going to freeze. However, what I personally recommend is just get into the habit of draining each um, fresh water, waste water and boiler drain down point um, uh, completely to ensure there's no water in the system because it gets you into the habit of having them drain down. Because come winter, if you do forget about obviously draining them down, because you've not been in the swing of things uh, you'll ultimately get frozen water in the system uh, which can then lead to cracks in the pipes um, and is obviously a load of mess so just bear that in mind moving on from the wastewater tank you can see that you've got your hookup point here and this is for your 230 volt electric this allows you to have 230 volt mains electric going into the vehicle um, and will supply um, the fridge and various um, appliances in the vehicle with power. Moving on, you've then got your LPG locker, so this is where your gas bottles are located. I'll open that up for you now. And with this open, you can see you've got space for two 
gas bottles in here and your regulator is all fit in the vehicle ready for use you will need a pigtail to connect the regulator to the gas bottle of course and then simply turn the gas bottle on to allow the gas to uh, to go through the van um, and can therefore be used please ensure that when traveling gas is turned off at the bottle you never want to travel with gas on at the bottle um, due to safety if you have are involved in a crash obviously it's highly flammable so just bear that in mind so now moving on from the gas locker into the cassette toilet um, you can you can see that I've just opened the locker and it gains you access to your cassette to remove this all you need to do is push up on the blue um, tab and slide out like so now before doing that you need to always make sure that the blade on the toilet is closed if the blade is open what will happen is you'll go to remove this it will get jammed uh, and if you do force it it'll ultimately break the system so please ensure that the blade is closed at all times I'll show you how to do that when on the inside of the vehicle now to empty this what I'll do is I'll pull it out and stick it on the floor um, show you the points that you need to know right so as you can see the cassette is out you've got a funnel at the top here so to empty you need to uh, twist that funnel out remove the blue cap and then using the blue button uh, button on the back click that that will release an internal vacuum in the system and will allow you to empty all of the contents out of the funnel in one steady flow once you've done that you can put a bit of water in here just to obviously swill the uh, swill the system out uh, if you have got blue fluid as well just stick it straight in the top of this cap uh, which will allow you to purify and clean the system uh, you will also notice on the cassette you've got this blue lever here which turns this is what makes contact with the blade and allows it to open and close the cassette this should always remain in this position there should be no need for you to change the, uh, turn that because if that is off slightly it won't allow you to push the cassette in correctly when the cassette has been emptied and you're ready to move on obviously simply line the cassette up and push that until you hear that click that blue tab that will then rest in place directly underneath the cassette you've got your next drain down point which is your fresh water drain down point you can tell because this is obviously uh, a blue valve again similar to the uh, wastewater all you need to do is simply turn this and this will empty the fresh water tank uh, completely as I mentioned when you are traveling you can of course once you've got rid of the majority of the water drain the entire tank down and leave it open moving to the back you can see you've got your bike rack here uh, on the back along with your reversing camera which is right up at the top there underneath the, the brake light and coming round to this side of the vehicle you'll notice that you've got a point here to access um, your fresh water tank this is in essence how you fill up your fresh water uh, all you need to do you need a key to obviously remove this you can then remove this and then using a food grade hose pipe that will go in and you can fill the system with fresh water i recommend using a food grade hose pipe as it stops any bacteria from building up um, in the uh, in the hose pipe and as i say it'll allow you to fill it when it's overflowing you know it's full um, and then you're good to go you're good to go putting the cap back on to seal the system your habitation door is next we'll go in there um, just in a second you can see that you've got your fridge vents on this side of the vehicle now bear in mind it is a hot day obviously today um, and uh, with these hot days you need to bear in mind that your fridge isn't going to perform as efficiently to help the fridge perform a little bit more efficiently like I've done here I've turned the vehicle into the shade um, this will allow the fridge to pull air through and allow it to cool a lot faster if the Sun is blaring on down on this side of the vehicle obviously it's going to make it harder um, for the fridge to do its job so just bear that in mind you can get fridge vents for these as well or fridge covers rather um, when um, when storing the vehicle you've got a door light as well up at the top there um, which will help you find the van um, when uh, 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 when the vehicle um, is being used at night and then you can see you've also got a locker at the front here just behind where we started and in here is a bit of storage really nice bit of storage actually you've got your point for your uh, wind out awning which is located on the top here we've put your carpets in the bottom here uh, and also as you can see under this plastic panel um, is where your uh, battery is lo located for your leisure side of things so your leisure battery is all contained in there 
Now, as I mentioned, there is an awning fitted to this vehicle. So before uh, I move on to the inside, this is a Fiamma um, awning. Uh, if it is a windy day, you can see the wind's picking up here. Take the awning back in. You don't want this awning to be out when the wind is picking up. Because uh, as you can imagine, it is a big sail at the end of the day. So just bear that in mind. Okie dokie, so moving on to the inside of the vehicle. Just above the habitation door, you can see you've got your control panel. On your control panel, you can see you've got your power on button. And you can see that has just activated your lights as well. Next to that, you've then got your leisure battery level. Click that and it shows you, you hold that and show you what level we're at. We're not plugged in currently, hence why it's just reading above amber. Your vehicle battery level is then next and you can see the reading on that as well. Um, do bear in mind uh, that depending on which you select um, will depend on uh, what your lights are being drained off. So always make sure after checking your vehicle battery level, you click it back onto leisure battery because you don't want your lights and everything running off your vehicle battery. So just bear that in mind. Underneath as well, you've got your pump button. That little tap indicates the pump. Of course, you need to make sure that there is... Um, water in the vehicle and um, once you've done that you can go to your taps including your shower turn them on and turn them to hot that'll pull hot, uh, water from the fresh water tank into the boiler and out of the tap when it's running steadily you prime your system for your hot water once you've done that flick it over to cold and do the exact same and then when it's running steadily you prime your system for your cold water once you've done that you can leave your pump on because in essence your system is primed and each of your taps have a micro switch will, which will activate and deactivate the pump whenever you should need it. The only time you need to always make sure that the pump is turned off is if you've got no water in the vehicle. Now coming back over to, um, to my explanation about running it through the hot um, before the cold, the reason I tell you to do that is you've got a boiler on here which is a Truma boiler which holds approximately 10 litres of fresh water. With that in mind, um, it's going to take a while, obviously, for that water to heat up. So if this is the first thing you do when you're on site after filling up, turn it on, turn it to hot, and pulling water through that 10 litre um, boiler point and out of the tap, when you go to turn your heating on, uh, which will be the next thing you do for your hot water, by the time you've done everything in the vehicle, uh, your uh, water should be up to temperature and ready to use. Um, because you've got to bear in mind, it is going to take at least 30 to 40 minutes to get that water up to temperature. So if it's the first thing you do uh, when you're in the vehicle, by the time you need it, it should be nice and warm for you. Now, coming back up to the control panel um, next to the pump, click that. You can see shows our fresh water point with nothing in at the moment because it's all in the wastewater tank, as you've seen. So don't worry about that. Next to that, you've also got a light. Um, which is uh, for outside, uh, the outside um, awning light uh, and then in here you've obviously got your cupboards for plenty of storage in the kitchen area. Um, in the kitchen area you've also got obviously a hob with gas rings along with an oven and grill and you've got your sink with plenty of storage below. Now underneath the oven you can see that you've got um, your pump which is located there along with the main socket and you'll also notice you've got some red valves in the corner there. You may have some more around the vehicle, um, they are called what's known as isolation valves and they isolate certain areas of the vehicle. You don't need to mess around with them, they're purely for the technicians when working on the vehicle. Uh, everything you need to know will be on the panel and everything um, that I discussed today so don't worry about that. Now, coming straight on, you can see that you've got your bathroom area, your cassette toilet is straight on. Now, we've discussed, obviously, about priming your shower and your taps and everything. And as we mentioned outside, we've briefly mentioned about opening and closing the blade for the toilet. So, when the toilet is in use, you need to ensure that the blade is open. Push that away from you, and that will open the cassette. That will allow all the waste to drop into the cassette and once you've done that, click the blue button on the top there which will activate the flush and that will flush the entire system. Once you've done that, push that away from you to close the system. Now you close the cassette for two reasons. The main reason being is it stops odours from escaping but it also will get you into the habit of having that closed so when you come to remove the cassette you don't run into the issue as discussed earlier. 
Now coming back up to here, as I mentioned, that blue button does activate your, fl uh, your flush. Do bear in mind that you do need your pump on that for that to operate. Um, so just uh, make sure you, you obviously have that running. So moving away from the bathroom area, um, you can see that your heater is just located here. Uh, the heater uh, is dead simple. So you've got your gas on this side. So you're wanting to run the system off gas. Uh, dead easy. All you need to do, turn it like that. You can hear it clicking. Um, push it in and then allow that to ignite. Obviously I've no gas in the, on at the moment so it's not going to work. But then that will allow you to run this heater off gas. To allow the fan to obviously work, you've then got this here. So you've got the first dial here, which is indicating off. You've then got the ability to switch it to manual or auto. Manual will allow you to adjust the fan speed using this dial here. You may be able to hear the fan um, just working and circulating the air. Uh, and then the automatic will basically automatically assign whichever... Um, whichever fan speed it thinks it requires basically but 98 times out of 10 you will have it on the manual feature an option there um, this uh, is just a recirculation um, of air and it's more intense you can actually hear that that fan a lot more on the video now um, and as I say that is just more of an intense um, fan depending on obviously what the situation is like um, now as I mentioned that's if you're wanting to run it off gas if you're wanting to run it off the 230 volt electric, you can see that this is how you do it. So at the moment, you've got the off switch, which is here. This is the O, so it indicates that it's off. Using this dial, you can then flick up and down. Uh, if you flick up, it shows you um, that you can run the heating system off the two kilowatt electric. Um, if you flick it down, you can run it off half a kilowatt electric and then flick it all the way down to one kilowatt electric so again depending on um, of course how much uh, you require or how much intensity nine times out of ten you're gonna obviously have it on two kilowatt electric now please bear in mind this is just for obviously the heating um, uh, on the vehicle's temperature it's not for the, the water temperature so please um, make sure that you remember that this is just for the vehicle's um, heating you've also got this dial as well um, which will again um, uh, allow you to change the uh, the intensity and, uh, and in essence, uh, de determine what uh, temperature you're after. Above the heater area, you can see that you've got a, um, a really good bit of storage here for hanging space. Um, you've also got an access to the heater should you need to. That's, of course, really just for the technicians. Um, you'll also notice that at the back here is where your uh, aerial is located. At the moment you've got a green light on which indicates that the aerial's on. You have got a little, little button on there where you can turn it on and off, but I just keep it on as that will turn off automatically when you turn off the system uh, or the 12 volt system on the top. Now at the moment there's no need for us to extend the aerial because you can see that you've got a green light uh, which indicates that you're going to get good signal. Uh, if you do want to better your signal all you need to do is unscrew that um, cap or this little thing here and push the aerial up and that will allow you to maximize the range you can then of course use this um, this arm to tilt uh, the head of the aerial again to maximize and, uh, Im and improve the range and signal opposite the heater you have got a bit more storage on this side that's where your table's located freestanding table that is microwaves up at the top please bear in mind that this will only work off 230 volt electric and below is where your fridge um, is. So this is a Dometic fridge and it's a three-way system. So it's in essence a smart system. There's three ways to power it. So you can see at the top you've got your on button here. Next to that you've got a little plug icon. You've then got a little flame icon and then a battery icon. So when you're on site and you're hooked up to mains you'll run the fridge off this little plug icon. This allows you to run it off 230 volt electric which will be the majority of the time. If you are wild camping, you can run it off gas, and this little flame symbol indicates the gas, which when you're wild camping, you will run it off this. And then your battery indicates your leisure battery. So this will allow you to run the fridge off your leisure battery uh, for when you're travelling. Now, a lot of people think that they can run the fridge off 12-volt leisure battery when wild camping. That is not the case. You always need to make sure that when you're stationary and you're wild camping, you run it off your gas. 
as you'll still uh, as you'll simply get an error code and it will not allow you to run it off 12 volt if you are stationary the reason for that is this fridge takes so much power what could end up happening is it'll end up uh, burning out your 12 volt leisure battery and leaving you with no power um, the only reason you're allowed to use this when traveling is because this vehicle has got a built-in alternator it will send power um, to the leisure battery as the vehicle battery is running through the alternator and to the fridge which will allow you to obviously power the fridge when traveling opposite that you've then got your temperature um, which you can then change in the fridge and you've got a little reset button here which is on the end should you need to reset it your fridge is below and your freezer is just up at the top um, do bear in mind uh, cold things need to go in the fridge to maintain the temperature uh, and frozen things need to go in the freezer as it does a better job at maintaining the temperature and not necessarily getting it down to temperature so just bear that in mind and moving into the lounge area now you can see you've got a really nice uh, big lounge in this vehicle with storage all along the top as well before i talk you through the lounge setup it's worth noting that in the uh, far left cupboard um, or far right depending on how you're looking at it just on the driver's side you have got your sergeant box in here this is where your fuses are located and your rcd breaker as you can see, if the vehicle ever trips, you need to come to this point. You have got a little test button, so if the vehicle trips, because you're not getting any power to the vehicle, um, you, or you can't get your lights on, for example, you know that you're getting power to the van, so there's therefore a fault with your vehicle and not the campsite. Um, but obviously, if you te click that test button and nothing trips, you're clearly not getting any power to the vehicle, so it's therefore a fault with the site. So that's a nice little test you can do. But yeah, as I say, RCD breakers there, fuses are located there. You have got the charger here which is on, you never need to turn that off. Um, you can obviously put the system in shutdown by doing that. Don't do that, you should leave that as it is. It's only really there for if your vehicle isn't being used for months and months on end. Now coming to the, uh, the lounge space, you've got two travelling seats as you can see. Underneath here you've got some storage. Got a little bit of storage underneath here, um, but on this side is where your, your boiler is located. Now I'll talk you through the boiler uh, last of all, um, but this area does actually in fact turn into a bed. Now, uh, to first mention, you have got a little stand here. How this works is fold it out like so, this pops up, and this then connects onto the edge of the bed. As you can see, I've then connected that on to the, uh, the side of the seat and this is in fact a little coffee table it's almost like a little side table should you want a cup of tea or anything like that it's like a little coffee table for you um, so that's what that is so don't confuse that for being part of the bed although it looks like it that is just simply um, a coffee table now making up this area into a bed you can see that you've got this slide out piece here which lines up nicely here and as you can see, by removing this cushion, you've got this piece of wood here. Now what you need to do is this piece of wood set, sits in the back here, using these slats here, which typically you'd probably have underneath this seat anyway. Um, what you need to do is this will line up and slot into the rail here. I'll just pause the video so I can do that now. As you can see, that piece is now slotted in nicely. Uh, using the edge of this, this thing supports uh, the edge of uh, the piece here. Um, and then, using these infill cushions, which were originally the base of the seat, they slot into here, like so. Just pull this one down. And then using the backrests, you can see they just simply fall into place. That one can, of course, be removed. And then you have your double bed, is simply made up here what i do recommend is using a mattress topper just to level out the surface but you can see you've got your double bed there and you can of course use this one as a single as well and just like that we're back to uh, the lounge setup now you may have noticed underneath here there was two buttons this is as i mentioned where the boiler is located um the boiler is the only thing that we need to speak about um uh, on the vehicle uh, which is remaining so all you need to do to access that is simply remove this cushion like so I'll then remove this piece here and this will gain you access to the boiler 
Now it's worth mentioning as well, you can see that this panel pulls across from this area here to create the L-shaped lounge. Of course, if you are traveling with children here, they will need somewhere for their legs to sit. So for traveling, you need to remove this section and then simply pull back like so and allow that to clip into place. Now, you can see that your boiler is located behind this system, uh, this, uh, these controls here. And these controls control uh, your water temperature and water heating. So you have two options. You've got an option of running the water system off uh, gas and the electric, uh, and the option of running it off electric. So running it off gas, you've got the option of 50 degrees or 70 degrees. Now in the middle option, you can see that zero again, that indicates off. All you need to do is simply flick this up or flick it down depending on the temperature. Now nine times out of ten you're going to run it on 70 degrees if you're washing up but if you're having a shower you may want to run it off 50 degrees. So that's for your gas. Now if you're on site and you're hooked up you can run it off of course your electric. You've got two kilowatt electric, uh, electric or one kilowatt electric. Two kilowatt electric is obviously down. One kilowatt electric is obviously up. In the middle again is off. 2 kilowatt electric is the equivalent to about 70 degrees and 1 kilowatt electric is about 50 degrees. What I recommend is when on site, I'd flick it onto gas first just to get the water up to temperature quickest and then flick it over to electric, mainly to maintain that water uh, temperature. Now, well, like I mentioned, you need to always ensure that on the outside, that cover is removed from that vent to ensure that you're, of course, not, uh, you're not gassing out the system. Now finally you can see where your boiler is located, um, so obviously if you need to access it on anything on the boiler just remove this cushion and your boiler is accessible. Now the only thing that you really need to know underneath here is your final drain down point which is your boiler drain down point of course. That drain down point is this yellow valve here, flick that up to release the water. You can probably hear that draining out the vehicle now, I'll leave that open. Uh, now if you want to close the system simply flick, flick that down like so. Uh, but to drain it, leave it up. Obviously in winter, you always need to make sure that that's drained down whenever you are not using the vehicle. Uh, before we end today's video, uh, you'll also notice on all your uh, windows you've got blackout blinds and fly screens as well, which are built into them. And you can of course put all your windows on venting should you want to. Like so. That will just allow air to circulate through. Please bear in mind if you are travelling, they all need to of course be closed. Uh, a little bit like your aerial as well, you need to make sure that is of course um, down in position. Um, finally, but not least, you've then got your bed up at the top. To access this, you need to pull this like so. Your ladder is just located underneath. And then you can fold the mattress out to make that into a big double bed. If you then want to gain access into the front, simply push that back and you can see it leaves this area nice and open. So that concludes the handover video on the Tribute T620. I hope you enjoyed.